in the know, non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. This guy doesn't just like football. He f- loves football. I did watch him. I was standing right behind him when he was warming up and saw him kind of reach for his groin and, you know, hold it and whatever you do with the groin. Rub it. That's what I think I witnessed. Um, It twinged a little bit on him. Football! Football, yeah! 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 Football! Football! Get some! Love me some Brad Childress. This is Purple Daily, Daily Vikings Entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. We're hitting you with a Saturday checkdown episode here. Just a little, just a little sampling of Purple Daily to get your weekend started. Thank you guys for making this one of the most popular football podcasts in America, in the Apple rankings. No matter what you watch, TCL has award-winning TVs for any budget, any space, all with stunning picture quality. Plus, TCL makes more than just TVs. They offer mobile products, audio devices, home appliances, TCL brings you joy and simplicity through innovative technology. Learn more at TCL.com and inspire greatness with TCL. Hello, gentlemen. How are you today? Hello. Hello. Oh, gorgeous Saturday. It, it is, fantastic. isn't it? Fantastic. I love the weekend. I woke up. You're still wearing your same clothes from Friday. It must have been a crazy Friday night for oh, you on this Saturday. God, I was out late. I, I was just tearing up the town. <laughs> Supporting my community, buying tons wow. of beers. I mean, Judd does wash and dry his clothes like every day with that little hamper that's in his office. So I wouldn't be shocked at all that Judd's exactly. wearing the same thing, you know, from Friday into Saturday. Wouldn't shock me one bit. Judd's like a cartoon character. He's like Peter Griffin. He just wears the yep. same thing every episode. Stuff every day. I've been accused of that. Hey, so and it's not wrong. Kendall. I've been accused of being a Kendall. It wears the same. I, I, I like come accessorized with three different things. Yeah. So, boys, I, I just have a bunch of leftover schedule stuff to throw at you. Viking schedule fodder. There's a lot of people that go. I don't know how they comb through some of this stuff and come up with, like, yep. it's like s- someone went through or has a database and found, like, which teams travel the furthest and the least yeah. airplane travel, right? Stuff like that. Yeah, so I'd love to just fly through some of this. Let's start with this one. The Vikings, according to Sharp Football Analysis, so they're just taking Vegas forecasted win totals and ranking teams' strength of schedule that way. By that measurement, the Vikings have the 24th easiest schedule. So they have one of the, what, nine hardest schedules in the NFL. The Patriots have the hardest schedule. Part of it's the division. But it goes, these are the hardest schedules. Patriots, Bills, Chiefs, Raiders, Dolphins, Commanders, Chargers, Jets, Vikings. The easiest schedules by far are the Saints, Falcons, Panthers, in part because they all play each other. But uh, that's interesting. The Vikings do have, and it should be expected because they finished first place, so they play a first place schedule. That's why they play the Chiefs and some other teams, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, or who's the, who are the teams? They Not the Chiefs, the Bengals. That's why they play the Bengals. The teams yes, that are on their schedule exciting. because, yeah. That's correct. You're right. You're right. Okay. A couple more things for you here. Let's go to uh, the first the first six weeks of the schedule who has the easiest, who has the, so this is like, are you going to get off to a hot start or a slow start? And the Vikings have the seventh hardest schedule. The first six weeks, the jets have the hardest schedule early Browns, Patriots, Titans, Buccaneers, chiefs, and then Vikings come in at seventh Mm -hmm. followed by Panthers giants. Those are teams to watch that maybe you stumble, you start two and six or something. The easiest schedules for the first six weeks so teams that are on hot start watch are the Saints by far, Eagles, Bengals, Falcons, Niners, Bears, Ravens, Colts, Lions, Cowboys. Okay. So so like I would say how is this meaningful for the Vikings? The fact that the Saints and Falcons are among the easiest early schedules. And the Lions does, too. And the Lions. Does that mean that like those teams that you think are wins on your schedule get off to hot starts? They start four and two, five and two, whatever it is because their schedule's easy and now they're confident in the middle of the season and they're building something and now you have to face them. Just some, something to watch. And then you something come in and crush their dreams. You just kick their asses and they're like, we weren't that good after all. Yeah. But it does kind of feel that way when you look at the schedule that early on, like I think 
And I'll throw some more stuff at you guys here too. But I think the toughest stretch for the Vikings, I think it starts week two and goes through about week seven or eight. And then I mm-hmm. think the easiest start of the, it, that Green Bay game in week eight is kind of a could go either way for me because it's a road game on a short week after San Francisco. November, you're right. And then business kind of picks up from there. Yep. But like you face your toughest stretch to me is you get Tampa to start with, go win that game and start one and oh. And then you get short week at Philadelphia. And then you get home against Justin Herbert, potentially a road trap game against Carolina. And then Kansas City at Chicago is always hard. Monday Night Football against San Francisco, and then a short week road game at Green Bay after getting beat up in a car crash against San Francisco. So if you can weather that storm, those seven games, it gets much easier on paper, anyways. So I, I think the most, I think among the most misleading things about what we do now too is, is just an overall strength of schedule because I think we've known the opponents for months. So the strength of schedule, as far as opponents go is is what it's going to be what makes it interesting to me and why last night is such a magnificent night of football is this you mean two nights ago oh that's right i'm sorry it's It's saturday Saturday. well you know what i got i had so much to drink last night that i forgot that it was two nights ago now it's all blurred together (laughs) pardon me excuse me um but i think what makes this so interesting what occurred on thursday eve is the order of opponents and what we don't know because the key is this starting in at least week well hell it's probably week nine starting with that falcons game we have no idea from the falcons through the at detroit game to end the regular season who's going to pop up and who's not Mm -hmm. like detroit's got pressure now right and so detroit has an easy schedule to start but let's say they get off to a bad start injuries occur something like that more players are uh, getting busted for gambling on their phones no right there there's no rule that the detroit lions are going to be great let's say the falcons pop up or the saints so like this whole thing of trying to, to determine strength of schedule to me is damn near impossible because things change so much at least starting in november and now it's a wild card and that's why this schedule as currently constructed strikes me as a tough one yeah. so it's not like who are you playing who is good in 2022 it's the construction of the schedule itself i would rather get get philadelphia i think later than week two on a thursday night like week two on a thursday night there that's about as tough like prime time as you can possibly get now, if it had been a Sunday noon kick in October, I'm not saying it's easier, but I think it's not as daunting as four days after you play your opener, you now get Jalen Hurts and the Eagles. Yeah. yeah, that's why I think the pressure's on week one. I know the Bucs are probably the softest team on this schedule, but if you stumble, you're I, I think it's just a lock that you're going to be 0-2. I mean, going into Philadelphia on a short week, hostile place, the Super Bowl, or the NFC champion, I should say, that is a tough place to play on a Thursday night in a short week too. Like they, they have to win that first game. Cause just with the gauntlet of quarterbacks, they have to play early on and Herbert and Mahomes and whatnot. Like if you can kind of get out of the first seven games, obviously near 500, you'll take it as a win for sure, but it, it's going to be a grind to get to that point. And you, you can't really pass up the easy wins like bucks or even at Panthers. But here's what makes the grind easier. Here's another nugget for you guys. This is, 32 NFL teams ranked for how far they have to travel in 2023. Uh The Vikings are centrally located, Uh so it's very helpful. The Vikings have the fifth fewest travel miles of any team in the NFL. They actually travel 18,000 fewer miles than the Seattle Seahawks, who, and obviously like these coastal teams might. So the teams that travel the most are predictably the Seahawks, the Niners, the Dolphins, the Rams, the Chargers. The Seahawks, for instance, travel 32,000 miles. The Vikings travel 13,000 miles. The Seahawks travel across 36 time zones. Vikings only 16. The Lions only eight time zones. So the Lions have an easy schedule, and they don't have a lot of mileage wear and tear. They don't have to spend as much time on planes and stuff like that. Uh Mm-hmm. 
Very interesting. The teams that travel the fewest amount of miles, again, it's a lot of centrally located teams, but Bengals, Packers, Bears, Panthers, Vikings, Lions, and then the Jets. Interesting. I think the Jets oh, really? got a little, a little bit lucky there. Okay. With their job, because the Giants are among the most traveled teams. Hmm. Well, let's delve down more. Let's go more. Let's go in, in depth. Let's talk about week three. LA Chargers in Minneapolis, noon kickoff, right? Mm-hmm. It's, a ten, it's a 10 a.m. kickoff. Disadvantage for them. Yep. Disadvantage Chargers. So, like, mm-hmm. if you want to really grind this <laughs> thing, thing out with nuance, like, if you want a show that's special, this show here is it because we're going to tell you right now Justin Herbert and the Chargers are going to be starting right after they their body clocks wake up. Dude, like they're going to be craving, you know, acai bowls and omelets. And the Vikings are going to be ready oh. to rock, been up for seven hours already. So will I. That sounds really good. Okay, Locks. here's a couple other fun uh, nuggets for you. The Giants are the only team in the NFL with five back to back road games on their schedule. No other team has more than three. The Vikings have two where they mm-hmm. go back to back road games. Mm-hmm. Now, the Vikings only have one back-to-back home game situation, and that's at the end of December. So that's one of the areas where I would say is a disadvantage for them. Here's another one. And this one, I, I don't know where the Vikings fall here, but the 49ers and Rams each have a league-high four games against teams coming off bye weeks. No other team has more than two of those situations. So that's that's something to watch with Niners and Rams where you're going to get four highly prepared teams coming off self-scout week. Interesting. 11 teams have no games against teams coming off a bye. That would be the Cardinals, the Ravens, the Bears, the Browns, Colts, Jaguars, Dolphins, Patriots, Jets, Steelers, and Titans. So those are just like things that you wouldn't think about with schedule quirks, but if you play teams coming off a bye week, they're going to be better prepared for you. And so I might, maybe you'd, maybe you'd ding the Rams and the Niners a, a win that you wouldn't because of the way the schedule's laid out. That like that to me, that's one way where the schedule plays into your record when you see it laid out that way. Week 13 by too late or okay? Because I, I will say this, the worst buy in my opinion is like a week six buy. You do not yeah. need a buy, but is week 13, which I believe I, I read in the strip today is the second latest buy that the Vikings have ever had. Is it it's, too late or nice for the stretch run? I will say it's too late if you're reeling in like October and you got injuries oh, no, no. and you just like your record is under 500. You could just really use a breather. But if you can, if you can get to that bye week and you're in the playoff hunt, it's a great time for a bye week because you get yep. to refresh and change your tires. Right. And all the other cars have been out on the, on, on the track for a hundred laps. That's right. That's a NASCAR. Hey, stop, little pit stop for okay. you. That's a NASCAR metaphor. There's a guy. Right there. There's a guy that grew up on NASCAR. Uh, Dale Earnhardt was my favorite athlete as a kid in the '90s. Mm-hmm. I will say it's too late. Um, just knowing the grind of a football season, how injuries tend to happen, uh, I think it's far too late. Unless the Vikings are very fortunate, they don't suffer significant injuries, and then yes, that scenario that Phil laid out at the end that that would be obviously the best case scenario. I think with injuries and things that just happen like that 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 bye week in my opinion is too late i'd rather see it at the end of october it's probably where i would rather prefer it okay okay yeah. i think for selfish reasons i'd like that bye week to be around mid to late october as well take advantage uh, of some fall weather and whatnot yes. selfishly i would love i know judd loves this uh my vacation time typically always goes in that little mid-october range where there's still mm-hmm. really nice weather around the country uh so now it's like you know december yeah, i can't really go to the east coast you know i can december. tell you last night the wife not pleased when I said Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve, I'm out. She was not happy. She said, <laughs> "Don't tell me that right now." I said, "Why not? It's the schedule's out." It's noon though. It's noon game. Like I actually prefer of the Christmas Eve time slots. I think noon is the best one because you're still I'm able to totally like, with you. Be I'm, good not compla- there. Right. I'm not complaining. You tell Don still that I told time for that. I'm not. I told Don years ago the National Football League and professional sports do not care about days that you do. Yeah, it's, it's just December 24th and 25th exactly, for them. Exactly right. It's a holy day. Yeah, you know what it's for? Football. All right, here are the teams that you will see the fewest amount of times in prime time. Zero for the Houston Texans, Atlanta Falcons, Arizona Cardinals, and Indianapolis Colts. So you will not see those wow. teams in prime time. For right now, they could be flexed in if they're good. Right. But let me say this. Let, let me say this. Bravo NFL, 
I like this thing now yeah. of not forcing Houston in. Uh, Colts could be Colts could be interesting. I will say that. Um, but like a team like the Texans, get them the hell out. I love this. Washington Commanders only once in primetime. Everybody else in the league has at least two primetime games. So Perfect. Washington, Houston, Atlanta, Arizona, Indianapolis, those are just going to be teams that you might see for 10 seconds on the Red Zone channel. They will not, they will not matter for your viewing. I'm teams good. you'll see the most in primetime this year. There are four teams with six primetime games. The Chiefs, the Chargers, the Bills, and the Cowboys. Jets got five. That's right. Aaron Rodgers got five, not six. And the teams with five are the Jets, Vikings, Packers, Raiders, Eagles, Niners, and Giants. So go go back to the six, please. Yep. Read the six teams. Chiefs, Chargers, Bills, Cowboys all get six primetime games. So of those four, which one is most likely to disappoint and be flexed out a few times? Chargers, probably. Probably Chargers, or if there's a significant QB injury to the Chiefs or Bills. Um, because last year, what the Broncos had like six primetime games through the month of October. Like they were on primetime, yeah, we couldn't get them off. Oh yeah. my god! So, so like, Broncos still get four. Lions get four. It's the most they probably ever do you had. Guys, do you guys think the Bills might be set up for a bit of a fall? The Josh Allen scuttlebutt has been really weird, and I don't think it's fake. Yeah, Stefan Diggs. The well, Josh the Allen personal stuff. They yeah. broke up and then there Brian Dable has been gone for two years now. Yeah. Like, there's some I weird think... vibes. It's almost like they missed their window to really cash in. Correct. You no. Know? So yeah, that could be that could be interesting. And the Cowboys, who the hell knows? The Cowboys could go 13 and 4, or they could fire Mike McCarthy in the third week in October. Well, none of those things would It's on him me. now because De- Dex's Dex's guy is gone. Kellen Moore's gone, man. So now it's on Mike, who I don't Dude, know. The if offense he's still has a great been offensive excellent. Mind. I know, and I don't know that Mike is still a great offensive mind. About to find out. out, yeah. So, yeah. And and conversely, more. the Chargers could benefit. Yes, they could. So, all right, those are just some leftover schedule nuggets there. So the Vikings aren't going to have to travel a whole lot, but their schedule is hard to start the year. It smooths out on paper. Of course, all of that could change because the NFL is unpredictable, but... Yeah, thanks for hanging out with us. We also have a merchandise shop, too. If you're looking for your official Before I Die hoodies and T-shirts, we have a couple different designs in the Score North slash Purple Daily shop. It's scorenorth.com slash shop. Scorenorth.com slash shop. You can find Victory Monday shirts. You can find your Judd Zolgad Wave the Flag hooded sweatshirts and T-shirts. And also, again, you're just one Before I Die Swag, all available at scorenorth.com slash shop. This has been your Saturday Checkdown edition of Purple Daily.